In this video, we are going to discuss collision theory, uh, what it is and why it's important in chemistry. Um, basically, collision theory is a theory that describes uh, how reactions take place. Um, the main point of collision theory is that the substances that are reacting must collide in order to react. So they must physically come in contact with each other. Uh, when they do collide, they must collide in the proper orientation. Also, uh, when the substances, atoms, molecules, or ions, when they collide, they have to collide with a sufficient amount of energy, a sufficient amount of kinetic energy, in order to form something called the transition state and then go on to form the product. So if they collide with a very low amount of energy, they probably won't have enough uh, energy to uh, proceed in the reaction. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, a little figure here. Uh, here we can see um, two molecules, A2 and B2, and A2 is represented by uh, this figure here, and B2 is by this. Uh, in order for A2 and B2 to react to form two moles of AB, uh, these two molecules must collide, and they must collide with sufficient energy, and of course in the correct orientation. So a correct uh, orientation would look something like this, assuming they have a sufficient energy, uh, then the bonds between A2 would be broken, the bonds between B2 would be broken, and we would form new chemical bonds between one molecule, uh, one atom of A and one atom of B. So we have to break our reactant bonds and form our new uh, product bonds in order for this reaction to proceed. So let's look at this diagram, uh, which, which uh, shows us a reaction between uh, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, car and they react to form carbon dioxide, and nitrogen monoxide. So you can see how these molecules are represented here. Uh, in order for carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide to form uh, CO2 and NO, they must collide uh, in the correct orientation. In other words, if you can see this oxygen here, which I'm circling here, it must collide right here on this carbon atom uh, in order for that bond to form. And you can see here, uh, for A and B, we're showing you a couple of uh, uh, ways that they may collide in, uh, some, in a way that's not the correct orientation. If the two oxygen atoms collide, those aren't going to be able to form uh, our products. Or if the um, nitrogen, right here, the nitrogen, on our nitrogen dioxide uh, collides with the oxygen atom, then again, we won't have the correct orientation. The correct orientation would look something like this, where the um, oxygen atom on our NO2 uh, collides uh, directly with our carbon atom. So those guys uh, form a chemical bond, and you form something called a activated complex or a transition state where you're beginning to form the new bonds that the products need and you're beginning to break the old bonds between uh, the reactants. So this would be an example of uh, something called the transition state. This transition state would then decompose or break apart and form our uh, products. Now, also, our second condition is that they not only collide in the correct orientation, but they collide with sufficient energy. Remember, in order for them, uh, uh, when they do collide, if they don't collide with enough energy, there won't be enough energy to um, break some of the reactant bonds that must be broken, and so the new bonds um, won't form. We won't form that transition state. So here, you can see these guys, if they collide without sufficient energy, they'll simply bounce off of each other and no chemical reaction will occur. Now, when we're discussing um, 
chemical reactions and the um, energetics uh, that take place. Sometimes it's uh, useful uh, to graph this on something called an energy profile or a reaction coordinate. On the uh, y-axis we have energy and generally this is free energy or uh, Gibbs free energy and on the x-axis we have the reaction progress so we're going from reactants to products. <clears throat> so here you can see that we have our two reactants and these two reactants must collide. If they collide with sufficient energy we'll form our transition state which would be right in here. Okay? So if these reactants collide with sufficient energy they'll form this activated complex that we call the transition state <clears throat> and the energy that it takes to form the transition state is what we call the activation energy. Sometimes it's abbreviated as uh, E with a uh, little a there. So the energy that it takes to form the transition state is what's called the activation energy. It's also defined as the difference in energy, a difference in free energy between the reactants and the uh, transition state. So you must have a, a sufficient kinetic energy in the collision uh, to form the transition state and that is our activation energy. If you do form the activation, the uh, transition state, then the transition state is incredibly uh, unstable and will very rapidly uh, break apart to form your products. Now here in this reaction the reactants have a certain amount of free energy and the products have less free energy. So the difference in uh, free energy between our reactants and products is our uh, delta G value for this reaction or our change in free energy. Uh, since our products have less free energy, the delta G value for this reaction would be negative. So this, the difference here, the energy in this case released by the reaction is the delta G value for the reaction and the energy that it takes to form the transition state is our activation energy. So this reaction would be exergonic because it releases free energy. Now let's look at an energy profile or a reaction coordinate for an endergonic reaction. Again, our uh, reactants have to collide in the correct orientation and they have to collide with sufficient energy to form this transition state. And that's what we call the activation energy. That's the difference in energy here between the reactants and the transition state. Once the uh, transition state is formed, it will decompose or break apart to form our products. And so, again, the overall delta G value for this reaction is the difference in energy between the reactants and products. Our products have more energy, more free energy than the reactants, so the change in free energy between products and reactants is positive in this. So this would be a energy profile showing an endergonic reaction. So be sure you're familiar with these uh, energy profiles and can draw these as needed.